two. Hi, everyone. It's Alison Edgar, the Entrepreneur's Godmother. And you know what? It's not Friday at 12.30. Just to confuse you, we have got a very, very, very special Facebook Live with the amazing Bryony Thomas, the author of Watertight Marketing. So um, I can't, oh, hello, Ben, fantastic. People are starting to arrive. Uh, Brian, are we dual screen now? Can you see everybody's comments or is it still? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Hi, Ben. Hi, Sarah. Fantastic to have you here. Oh, amazing. Um, So while we're waiting on you joining in, um, I'll talk a little bit about what's going on in the clan. Um, We have got some amazing things coming up. We have got, I know that some of you have already seen the offer at Goes on the 30th of November. We are having wow, who knew? Um, so you can get a table there, including your parking and lunch, two of my online courses for £199 plus VAT. Plus, it'll just be a great day. We'll do pitching sessions, and it's all about us. Okay, so we are starting to get people to arrive. Are we getting some? I don't know, can we do thumbs up? I'm not the queen of tech. That's uh, Brian and I, and I were been talking off air um, about she she's really good at everything, and I'm like I can't do tech. So she's driving tech tonight, which is amazing. So I I'm um, really good at everything. I said I was totally fine with dual screening. <laughs> dual screening. You know what? See, I'm in sales. All I hear is she's great at everything. Uh, so tonight, guys, we have actually got our wine because we, we did say, um, you know what? It's the evening. And Brian ate at our lunchtime session today that we did on the clan. Actually, the first time you read the watertight marketing book, it's best to be done over wine, which is why we've got ours. So um, I know we've got some people on here live and we will be expecting more as we go on. As usual, what we will do is we will crop out all my stuff at the beginning. We'll get to the core fantastic content from Bryony. We'll put it on the YouTube channel and we will write a blog so you've got access to this, you know, as and when you want it. Bryony has got some absolutely amazing offers. You know, the book, as I've, I've said, sort of in the PR on the lead up is, in my opinion, the best marketing book ever written. Um, especially for small businesses, because it's actually written in our terms and our, you know, methodology revolves in something that we can all do every day in our business. And that is why it is my absolute pleasure to have Bryony live with me tonight. I've been trying to track her down for about the last year and it was lovely to meet her the other day. So a big, massive warm welcome, Bryony, from the Entrepreneur's Godmother and the Can Clan. So before we get started, can you just tell the viewers um, really a little bit about you and, and what your background was before you wrote the book? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Alison. So wonderful to be here. Um, so um, before before I get started, look, just a quick shout on this Be Live for those of you who don't know. So we only know if you're here, if you give us a comment. Um, the, the tech doesn't tell us kind of who's uh, who's joining like Facebook normally does. So uh, if you want us to shout you out, then you do have to uh, you do have to leave a little comment. So hi, Ben. Hi, Vivian. Fantastic to have you here. Um, there are others who haven't meant, made themselves known yet. Uh, so a little bit about me. Yeah. Um, so I grew up on the Priscelli Hills in West Wales. Um, and doing doing now. I do genuinely speak Welsh, um, and um, I I grew up with a single parent father who was a builder, and uh, I went to university to do politics uh, because I wanted to be prime minister, <laughs> and I thought uh, you know, I thought politics degree would stand me in good stead, uh, and I, I had um I had a bit of a, a crazy upbringing. I didn't realise until I met you know normal people uh, that it. It was slightly unusual to have spent my infancy living in a hippie commune um, and uh, and going off to Glastonbury from year dot to whenever. So um, the curious rebellion, perhaps. Um, I think a, a hippie childhood makes for a phenomenal rebellion as as a, as a great capitalist. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, 
So after that, you um, obviously did some work in, as you told me, sales. You were on the sales side of the fence for a while. And look at Vivian saying, Brian, you for prime minister. I think that'd be quite a good move, to be fair. Um, so how did you, you know, how did you get this passion for marketing coming from a sales background? Yeah, so I, um, uh, like, I suppose like any uh, anyone who needs the money, Alison, I mean, I... Um, the, I started in sales. I've had jobs. I did, um, I did Tesco. In fact, I used to work at WH Smith and I used to um, change into my Tesco uniform in the Smith um, uh, toilets and then I'd run up the road and do my shift at Tesco because um, I was that glamorous. Um, and when I was at uh, university uh, studying politics to be prime minister, um, I needed the money. I was a self-funding student and I took a job doing telephone fundraising for ActionAid. And we um, did campaigns for Imperial Cancer, Mind, um, YMCA, Help the Aged, many of the charities um, known and loved by you all. And, uh, and we used to hit the phones and get standing orders. So uh, I, did, uh, I did three years of that. Uh, and that's selling with no um, tangible benefit to the individual. Uh, and whilst I was there, so I, I did um, I did about a year on the phone and then I um, was a campaign manager and I used to listen and craft the scripts and I um, uh, designed a, a kind of, um, well, that's where the logic sandwich comes from. So anyone who's read Wars Type Marketing, um, the logic sandwich, that very much came from early calling days. And then I did a year in recruitment. Ah, um, yeah. And um, the, I must say the long, uh, the... Logic Sandwich is actually one of my favourite parts of the book. It just makes such great sense, doesn't it? And, you know, uh, you know, just to, for those of you who think we're talking another language, you know, if you want to have the book and know what the Logic Sandwich is, Brian is going to post the link. You can have Watertight Marketing, e uh, the, the book on e-form for free. You can. I mean, that's amazing so you know we will talk about these things we'll talk about the offer again at the end but you know it's just fantastic so you were on the light side in sales we'll talk about sales and marketing later well, I moved to the dark side. and now you've moved on to the the, the dark side the marketing <laughs> side so come on now tell us now how did you get into marketing and how did you come up with the methodology you know i really yeah. you know this is something i haven't talked about but it's amazing Thank you. So um, I got into marketing because there I was doing my um, job as a recruitment consultant and a job came in for the marketing executive for um, a marketing agency called Mason Zimbler. Uh, many of you will uh, maybe based in the southwest like Alison or myself and you may have heard of Mason Zimbler and you may have heard of Mark Mason who went on to sit on set up Moobaloo. Dr. Mark Mason MBE these days. Um, and uh, so the job came in for marketing exec at Mason Zimbler and I called them and I said, I'm really sorry, I can't, um, I can't handle this job for you because I'm applying. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, I landed the job doing marketing of a marketing agency and we were marketing ourselves to the marketing directors in the marketing departments um, of technology companies. So um, a lot of marketing, marketing of marketing, marketing people. So, uh, and you know, talk, talking about marketing people, because I'd imagine there's people who are really watching this live with us now, or are going to watch on Catch Up or on the YouTube channel, who are yeah. in marketing. Um, so, you know, one of the things we talk about collaboration, we talk about you know working together. One of the things I'm really impressed with is actually you are working with other people who are in marketing to help implement that methodology that yeah. you've created. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, and I'd say it's one of the things. So in my career, so after Mason Zimbler, I did um, I did an MBA at Bristol Business School and um, landed a job for a, a little company called Clarity Blue. Um, you did predictive analytics, um, and we were bought by Experian. So we, um, uh, yeah. So there I was, age twenty eight, and uh, and I became the director of marketing for a FTSE one hundred um, in the UK. I told you it was a curious rebellion. Um, from, uh, from from hippie commune to uh, to business boardroom in in twenty eight short years. Um, well, yeah. So 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 in that role, one of the one of the things that I would say um, has always served me well 
is that a I came from a sales background so I always talked sales so I always made sure that the marketing that I was putting together um, helps people to have sales conversations yeah and then um, the other thing that I've always done is that I've been very good at explaining marketing in the way that non-marketers get it and see the value that's what um, I love about the book yeah um, and the, a, a real a real game changer for me, and it's chapter nine in the book, the, um, the book, uh, the chapter on budgeting. So that um, approach came. So I was at Experian and we had a new guy who had come into the team. He was commercial director. And I knew that he was on a brief to um, I think he had a 50 percent cost reduction brief. It was a, it was yeah. it was pretty it was pretty robust. Um, <laughs> And uh, and I know that the marketing budget is where people always go. Yeah, I'm not stupid. And yeah. uh, so I did a um, I did a review of everything that had been spent in the six months leading up. We were halfway through the year. I did a review of everything that had been spent, and I did it in this highly visual way that you'll see in chapter nine to um, indicate where the money was being spent in terms of influencing a buying decision. Yeah. And I went into that meeting expect fully expecting to um well they were fully expecting to halve my budget uh, and i left with a 20 percent increase in budget Woo, yeah. got you, got you. Uh, and uh, um, the the chap who's responsible for that is one of the linkedin recommendations so it's probably the least um effusive of linkedin re um, recommendations on there but it's probably the one i'm most proud of um because i know the backstory and so he walked in thinking that marketing was going to be where he was to save all the money and uh, and he left putting a, a, a short recommendation on my LinkedIn saying, um, essentially, I now understand. Um, and uh, he went on to set up a business in Hong Kong. And just when my daughter was born, who's five, he did call me and say, could I go out and do their marketing for him in Hong Kong? Which um, Wow, I well, that is a good yeah. testament, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So, um, yeah, life change. So, you know, with the marketing side of things, so, you know, there's other people who have got other methodologies, but, you know, you work with them as part of your company. So how does that work? Because obviously I've met um, Cheryl and I've met Rachel. And so, you know, can you explain to me a little bit about how that works in your company? Yeah, absolutely. So um, so I think because one of the things that I've been good at is helping marketers to explain themselves and, and um, explain the irony um, communicators. Um, to explain marketing in a way that gets the rest of the board to to go with them. Um, the marketing, so we have a licensing um, part of the business. And essentially, anyone who is a marketing consultant or a marketing coach um, or a growth coach or a sales coach who wants a robust process to walk people through, we license them. And we have yes. three levels of license. Um, so the people that you've met are accredited consultants and they are um, marketing strategists. They've been operating as independent consultants for a decade or more. Um, and they are fully licensed to to use the methodology in whole. And then we have um, a couple of other licenses where people can just partner people through our master plan program. Um, so they yeah. have accountability partners. So if they've got some clients who they're taking through, um, I don't know, doing their social media strategy or something, and they want to put that social media in in a broader context, um, yeah. you know, hooking it together with some great content and offline and PR or whatever it might be, then yeah. they might partner somebody through the master plan program in order to make sure that the piece that they're doing fits. Um, so yeah, we. Um, the, the methodology is available for anybody to use. Um, so you, that you're, if you download the book and go and get the workbooks, which are included with the free book, um, then uh, then you can use that on your own business. If you want to sit down with a client and be paid to give them advice, then then we do ask that you that you license with us. Yeah, <laughs> and quite then, like, right. A warm hug and help you out. Yeah, but if you look, I mean, there's probably people either in the audience or watching again that are social media consultants because it's quite a big business at the moment. But social media is just one little part of a jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? And if you haven't come from a marketing background, that actually using a you know a licensed and credible methodology will really help them to make more business, won't it? I mean, that's you know that would really help. And not only then, you know, for me, again, it's the end results of the client. So you know, it's not how about the small business makes money. Yes, it is, but ultimately, it's about the other small businesses or other businesses they help. So you know, again, that's a really clever you know business model that you've got. You know, I am in admiration. I have a, a new girl crush on Brian. Yeah. Um, so uh, the other thing, you know, with you know the bucket and the leaks and 
again, you know, anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, click on the link. I know that people already are saying that they've already downloaded the book, so thank you for that. Many of you, is, you know, it's free for everyone. Woo, we love that. Um, so how did you come up with the bucket and the leaks and how did all that happen? Buckets, funnels and taps, yes. Um, so everyone talks about a funnel, don't they? Um, they do. Oh, we will talk about that later. Yeah, you know, I, um, I, I have a love-hate relationship with the funnel. Um, I, uh, I think it's a really, really, really helpful diagram. Yeah, so um, it's a useful tool for for diagrammatically demonstrating that there are reducing number of people, at, you know, reducing down through um, the process. Unfortunately, yeah. as a metaphor, it is downright dangerous. Um, yeah. a, a sales funnel, as a metaphor, is truly awful. Most people have a colander. Um, yeah. You know, if, if you had to choose a kitchen utensil, um, <laughs> and. Well, and Blender. The blender's not a good one. No, no, no. Don't don't mutilate your clients. Top tip. Um, so, uh, so no, the, the so the sales funnel for me. The, the reason I find it difficult is that language um, language is really powerful, and the more you start using the word um, funnel, then the more you start believing one exists. Um, and yeah. actually, there is no there's 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 very um, you know there are very few organisations that truly have a funnel. You you generally have something kind of colanderish, um, and it's equally important that in that middle part of the process you're filtering people out. Yeah, that's an yeah. interesting and one of my sort of analogies that I use is to do with music. So we look at my database, and what I want is you know I want people that love my music. And I, I refer it back to things like country western. If I'm speaking, I'll say, you know, who likes country western music and they put up their hands. So if you got an email or if you got a message from Leanne Rhymes, how would you feel about it? Yeah, I love that. I love Leanne Rhymes. But what happens if you got one from like, you know, Bruce Dickinson or ACDC or whatever? And they're like, oh, I'd delete that straight away. So to me, again, it's a lot of people put a lot of kudos on the numbers that are in their list and the funnels yes. but it's about quality rather than quantity that's is getting yeah. the right to the right people I mean that's marketing isn't it Brian yeah, absolutely and um and it, interestingly so uh, so the music ones are really nice because what you're not saying there that um ACDC are bad you're just saying it's not your taste yeah, um, you might be better off at a different concert. You know, you probably wouldn't go for a, for a pleasant night out together if you were listening to music. Um, yeah. So and so um, when it when it when we say quality, and this is so one of the things about Watertight that um, that I've had reflected back to me a lot is that it's a very respectful way of marketing. It's it's yeah. it's a kind of marketing that means you can still look yourself in the mirror. Um, yeah. And so I went when I so we use the phrase the wrong kind of work um, and the right kind of work and making sure that you are attracting and, and pulling people through who energize your business and they energize your business because they're the right fit and they uh, they're both profitable and on purpose. Um, so if, if you if you have an understanding of, of the right kind of work and, and the wrong kind of work for you, then actually you need something that elegantly gets them to see that they're perhaps in the wrong place and allows you to respectfully hand them off somewhere else. Um, and so actually in that funnels part, it's funnels and filters. Um, and it, yeah. this is about being purposeful. Um, yeah. I talk about moments of yeah. purposeful pause. And what, I mean, because at the moment, you know, if I'm out networking or I'm talking to people about their business and I say, so who is your ideal client? And I still get people going, anybody <laughs> but that's not quite right is it you know how does your book help help explain that to them yeah so um there's a phrase i use in the book where i say that if you think you're selling one size fit all then you're probably asking people to wear a potato sack um, <laughs> i love that hashtag potato sack yeah you know it's like, like, that's fine <laughs> And nobody looks good in a potato sack. Um, one no. size fits all is is just really quite nasty clothing, really, isn't it? Um, whereas I much prefer something a little tailored, um, and perhaps that you know is is, uh, is my style. So um, I think the reason that people struggle to say their ideal client is because when they think about clients that they've enjoyed working with, they're not all the same color, size, shape, and feel. And so that uh, because people get stuck on 
demographics that is they are a man in their 40s yeah um they uh, they think oh well actually i worked with a woman in her 20s once and she was fun which means i could do stuff for anyone whereas actually if you look at psychographics if you look at the attitude of the woman in her 20s and the man in his 40s they probably had something significant in common that meant that you enjoyed working with them yeah yeah um, so I think the reason that people struggle with the ideal client um, is because they think they're having to do a pen portrait of um, the only kind of client they're ever going to work with. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, avatars are quite useful um, for for helping you find words and, and speak clearly and all that sort of thing. But they shouldn't be used as a qualification device. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is important. And I mean, what's your thoughts on people having a niche market. So, you know, to me, if you look at what I do with the Entrepreneur's God Mother, I've kind of created a niche startup, micro owner managed business. I'm not industry specific because sales is a process that I can teach to anyone, but I've niched in quite a wide niche, which means it's quite open. So, you know, what would be your top tips to teach people to find their niche? Yeah, it's uh, so, um, it's a, it's a great question. And I think it's so we uh, use um, you can tell somebody's done an MBA by how often they get out of four box matrix. Um, so so we do a four box <laughs> matrix. And if you if on one side you put the word profit and then on the other you put um, purpose or um, uh, what was, uh, a pride. So you've got pride and you've got profit, you've got purpose, and you've got profit and you've got low and high. So if something is both high purpose and high profit, yeah, then that be a yes, yeah, that's and you want eighty percent there. If they are high profit, low purpose, yeah, so they're going to make a lot of money, but actually it's going to um, it's going to de-energize you and it's going to demotivate demotivate you to do the work. I would say that's a probably no. Yeah. Um, probably hand off to somebody else. So ref um, have a referral strategy to monetize that in a different way or systemize yeah. it so that it can be delivered without your input. If it's um, high purpose, low profit, I would say that's a probably yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which means that you do it, but you do it with a really good strategy for maximizing the PR benefit of doing so. Yeah. So you study it. Um, you uh, you know you get videos in there tracking their progress. Um, you get them involved on an event like this. So you make sure that you get extra value from it that isn't perhaps directly money. And then yeah. if it's neither profit nor purpose, then simply do not do it. Dump um, it. Yeah, and with, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hand them off elegantly and uh, and with respect. Yeah, oh, I like that. Ideally, in an optimized way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Brian is a bit more subtle than me. I'm just like dump it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you know what? So the reason the reason for that, Alison, is um so I'm um I I'm writing a second book um and it's called Commercial Karma. Why yeah. helping people decently is a business strategy. Yeah. Uh, you know, just because someone doesn't like ACDC doesn't mean they're a horrible person. Um, yeah. It means that they, they'd enjoy a night out at a gig with someone other than me. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think I think that for me comes back to the collaboration. Yeah. You know, there, and this sounds really like I'm a bit weird, but I think business is, is like relationships. There kind of is, <laughs> you know, someone for everyone. You just have to find the right ones and find the right community and, and you know, I think sometimes, again, you kind of kiss a few frogs to get the prince. It's a bit like that in business. Vivian says, don't set yourself up for failure. And it's interesting because I think what you're saying, and this is what I took from the book, because I read it not long after I had rebranded to the Entrepreneur's Godmother. And part of the reason I moved away from sales coaching solutions, which I still do, but I'm trying to, you know, wind it down and be the godmother all the time, is literally for that purpose and pleasure and profit because, you know, I love being the entrepreneur's godmother. What my, you know, it does pay the bills and it does help. But I walk into a room full of 60-year-old men that have been selling for 40 years and they think that I can't teach them anything. So, you know, that I don't enjoy that. It pays, you know, really good money, but it's not what I enjoy. And I think you know, knowing what you enjoy, what makes you money is really important for your marketing because yeah. it has a message. I mean, would you agree with that? 
I, I agree wholeheartedly. And I think one of the things that's really important in entrepreneurial uh, businesses is energy and motivation. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, yeah, so all of you, uh, if you even flick open the book and see the um, the yo-yo diagram, so I talk about yo-yo marketing, um, and it looks like a roller coaster. And I'm sure um, you've all, as as entrepreneurs, experienced that roller coaster um, that entrepreneurial uh, people experience through ups and downs of sales, um, maybe employing people. You know, it's it's really hard work, and it which is why I think choosing your clients carefully is so important because that's where the energy is going to come to fire your business and drive it forward. And yeah. if you just imagine, so do you know, you know, sometimes when, when your phone goes and you look down at your phone and you see a name and you go, Oh, I don't want to answer that. Um, you just don't want many of those in your business life. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, Surrounding yourself with positive people around, yeah. you know, that's where, again, it might not be people that you are actually working with, but having a good network and a good circle for me is what I've found working, you know, with a yeah. lot of entrepreneurs, because some days it's the loneliest planet in the world. And again, yeah. I think having that and, and again, having good clients that make you boy and you want to go and do whatever it is you do or, you know, just really find that buzz is important. Um, yeah, so, so we, um, we talk about uh, clients and the customers you choose almost like, so if you if yo-yo diet, so the, um, the marketing, if you think about that as your exercise regime and you do it yeah. consistently. And then if you think about your diet as uh, your clients as your diet, yeah, you, um, it's, there's, the, there's the quick win, um, which is equivalent to a bag of chips. And it's fine to have a bag of chips every now and again, but not every night. Yeah, um, you need a healthy diet of stuff that energizes and nourishes you. And I think when you, if you were to look at that PP matrix and think, you know, you've got eighty percent in that pride and profit, and then perhaps ten percent in the maybe boxes, nothing yeah. down the no nos. Um, then you are so much, um, so much more likely to sustain the energy you need as an entrepreneur. And do not underestimate it. Um, yeah. Vivian, you're right. It is such a buzz, isn't it, when you share your successes together? So, uh, uh, and you're going to need that buzz, guys, to to get your businesses to where yeah, you definitely. And I think you know, in the clan, well, we've got a real mixture. We've got startups. We've got people that have been going for you know many many years. We've got a really good mix. We've got Dave White, who cannot believe the book is free. I cannot believe the book is free. It's amazing. And so, so why is the book free? You know, what is, what, why have you chosen to give the community this gift? So I'll give you, I'll give you two answers, both of which are absolutely true. Um, I'll give you the, um, the kind of bottom of my tummy answer. Um, and then I'll give you the business answer. So the bottom of my tummy answer um, is that I am almost physically compelled um, to help people who I think are onto something um, and for whatever reason aren't breaking through that that plateau um, into sustainable sales growth. So sustainable sales growth is is um, is what gets me excited. And um, so if I if I if I see someone and they they're onto something and I know it could be big, I am almost physically compelled to help them. And my um, my my dad, who I talked about earlier, um, died a few years ago, and he um, he spoke fluent Spanish, and wow. he said, um, yeah, and he only started learning when I was doing a, a, my GCSE, so he would have been in his forties, and um, uh, just before he died, he said, I really wish I could gift someone this language. I wish I could just, you know, touch someone's head and, and say, have this, have this, um, and I've, that's really stayed with me, and I and um, I I know what he means. And I do want people to have this. So there is a kind of part of me that genuinely just wants to say, you know, have this, have this. Yeah. Um, so that's the bottom of the tummy feeling uh, answer. I'll also give you the um, the business answer. Yeah. Which is um, that, uh, sorry, just hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's um, that a, a step towards me in terms of giving me your email address um, is worth more to me than the 50 pence I make on Amazon. Um, yeah. so, you know, for those of you who, who may or may not have um, published a book in your life, uh, books, even books that have sold um, every day for five years, 
Um, multiple copies every day for five years will not make you money in and of themselves. They are a platform. Um, yeah. and, um, and so if I gift a, a, a digital copy, um, then, you know, there is a there is an email exchange in that. There's a data exchange in that. Um, and I hope I will be worthy of landing in a few of your inboxes. Um, oh, I'm sure you'll be very worthy. Now, for those of the people who are watching live and on Catch Up, can they share this with their friends? Is this for everyone? Yeah. Yeah, look, everyone. So it's the gift. Yeah, like, you don't even have to buy Christmas presents this year. You just give them the gift. <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell I'm a canny Scot. Um, yeah. So, you know, what I, I, What we will do is we're going to open the forum um, for people to ask questions. So what I'll do is I'll ask you one more question. And then if anybody's got questions, please feel free. This is a golden opportunity to access finally wants you to have all that information so take what you can have and um, so how did you come up with the methodology come on share the secret after the wine of course well i'll tell you what um so this is going to show my age now um it was not a flux capacitor moment i didn't fall off the toilet and bang my head um that's a kind of that's a back to the future reference for those of you who are working out your films um so <laughs> I, there was no moment, um, it's a lifetime. So I would say that I can trace, um, I can trace elements. So certainly the, the values of the book go back to my, to my kind of hippie childhood. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the logic sandwich definitely had its startings in those early calls for action aid. Um, the stuff that I did at Mason Zimbler. So Mark Mason and Simon Zimbler were phenomenal marketers. I learned an awful lot from them. Everything, everything I've ever done has brought me to here. And I think, um, yeah, it's my life's work. Please have it for free. <laughs> so you've got a new book, which will be out. When are we anticipating that one, Bryony? Commercial Karma. Yeah. I won't make any promises. Um, okay, so I won't hold you to it, it's fine. No, well, it, um, What's Like Marketing came out five years after I started talking about my book. Um, and I've been talking about commercial karma now for two years, so I've got at least another three. Ah, uh, that's fine. <laughs> Plenty of time to get great content in there. Um, so, has anybody got any questions? Please feel free to pop them. I know there are people there who are watching. Don't be shy. Join us in. Um, you know, talking about um, the the book, and you know, there'll be a lot of people out here who will want to write books. My book will hopefully be out in October. I'm choosing covers now, which is quite exciting. Um, so, what would your top tips for anybody who is writing a book about their specialist subject, or you know, maybe just the life? What would the, your top tips on the book be? Write a really good one. Um, hey, I know that sounds. I know that sounds a bit crap, but. Um, the number of books, and I use that word almost with a with a bad taste in my mouth, um, that I've read that just aren't worth being a book. Um, you know, they're kind of a, a random collection of thoughts, and they haven't got a coherent, you know, they haven't got a coherent strategy, or they haven't got a coherent narrative. Um, so I don't believe people who say that uh, that a book is a business card. And um, I use a business card as a business card, and use a book as a book. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so make it really bloody good. Um, and then the, as a as a really practical tip, I would say um, make sure that you build. So it needs to be a satisfying read in and of itself. But do build in a data capture. Um, that's, yeah. that's the wrong word, not capture. An invitation, um, an invitation for people to come and um, get in touch with you. So for for, our, for us, I'm going to I'm going to do the product shot now. Um, um, workbooks. I'm gonna, they're, 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 there's 85 exercises here. So, um, that's amazing. when when you get a copy of Waterstone Marketing, you can go and get the workbooks, and that's included with the book. So, if you are writing a book, have something that goes with it, a companion piece that goes with it, that acts as an invitation for people to come and um, join your community. Because um, a, a books in and of themselves don't make money; they create you a platform. So you should really build in that community, um, that community building device into, you know, bake it in. And I mean, one of the things with the book, so uh, you know, it's it's quite 
it's quite out there and well known that I've never read a business book in my life. I've, you know, just kind of gone with the flow. Um, but I took watertight marketing on holiday with me to Mexico. So I can actually, I can remember, physically remember the moment when I had the eureka moment. And I'd been, we'd been there about a week and I'd been reading through the logic sandwich. Oh yeah, I get that, I can do that. And all the other parts, I thought, oh yeah, I get that, I do that. And then literally, and I was, I was in the pool in the jacuzzi area with my hard copy or paperback copy of the book, trying not to get it wet when I got to the bit about onboarding. Yes. And I'm like, onboarding? Why am I, you know, we're in sales, we pride ourselves in really communicating with our customers. Why are we not onboarding our customers when they download our courses? Why are we not phoning them just to make sure they're all right? Why are we not loving them and getting the loyalty? And literally, I got out of the pool and I thought, I need another cocktail now. <laughs> I've just, I've just had a eureka moment. So, so yeah, was that a question from Ben? Was there a question there? Uh, a okay. question from Ben is, um, when is your book out, um, Alison? Because Ben um, would very much like a signed copy. Oh, a signed copy? Uh, uh, um, hopefully, we're at final edits now and we're choosing covers, so hopefully October, November, in time for the Christmas stockings. All the entrepreneurs can have one of the Christmas stockings. Any other questions? Vivian, I'm sure you've got a question because you like to, to join in. Um, we're going to give it another um, 30 seconds, but what I really want to do is, you know, I really want to kind of do a wrap on A, how you can work with Bryony and, you know, B, how you can get the book and see, you know, what, what we can do to help the clan as a community, what we can do to help you. You've given us your time at 8 p.m. on a Tuesday night. Is it Tuesday night? Um, and we really, really appreciate, you know, every single minute of it. So, you know, it's time to pitch. Time to pitch. Bryony, tell us what we can do, how these guys can work with you, especially people who have got a marketing business who are only doing one part of the jigsaw. How can they take the, the methodology to really implement it and help businesses? Um, thank you, Alison. So um, the first thing that you can all do is share the um, share the free book offer with anyone you know in any business or third sector organisation, anyone who wants to um, grow and, and do things more efficiently and better. So uh, um, that's what you can do. Um, if you want to work with Watertight Marketing, we have a flagship program called the Master Plan Program. And uh, it is a one year program. There are 11 chapters in the book and there are 12 months in a year. Um, so <laughs> in the first month we get to know each other and then we go chapter by chapter um, through the book. And um, when I mapped the Master Plan Program out on paper, it looked good. Um, and 18 months later into the new format, I'm blown away. It's um, it's better than I could ever expect. So anyone who wants to get um, a really solid grounding in how to make confident marketing decisions that underpin sales conversations, um, do have a look at the master plan program. And if you want to partner people through that, just plug the master plan program in as a product that you sell, um, then do have a chat with us as well. So um, you can come to watertypemarketing.com forward slash license um, and there'll be information there. Um, or if you want to um, use the methodology one to one with your clients, again, we can license you on that. Um, but your best bet with everything, because anybody who goes out and talks watertight has done master plan. Um, so master plan is the way to go. And I love it. Yay. And and just in the aid of transparency, because, um, you know, some of the clan members will know that I'm sponsored. I've got sponsors for some of my online courses. Um, I am not sponsored by Bryony. The reason that we're doing this is I genuinely do think it is the best book on marketing that I have ever read. And again, I never got to the end. I need to do more because I've never finished a business book in my life. But um, I really to a question about how what you use to write the book, I think, which tools you yeah. use. Um, I, I, used, uh, I used that tool known as Word. Um, so no, I didn't use Scrivener. I have seen Scrivener looks quite good. I think it depends, doesn't it, on how your brain works. Um, so I, um, having been a marketing account manager for most of my career, I, um, I kind of created a copy platform and I tend to do that by thinking about it as a presentation. So I'm also a speaker, so I structure talks. Um, so I, I laid out the book as if it were a presentation with headings, uh, you know, and, and images. 
which is why it's a very visual book. Um, so I did headings and images, and I had probably talked water type marketing at conferences and presentations for, for a number of years before I came to actually write the book. Um, and I trained it and delivered it in, in a different way. So um, so when I came to put pen to paper, I was probably in a slightly different place to, uh, you know, perhaps if you're starting from scratch. Um, but yeah, so uh, difficult for me to answer that, Dave, in a, in a helpful way. Um, other than I've heard of Scrivener, I think it's quite good. Um, I, I did work with uh, a book coach. I worked with Mindy Gibbons Klein at the Book Midwife. And um, I know that Alison Jones at the Extraordinary Business Book Club um, has had some excellent successes. And um, Sue uh, Richardson at SRA Books in Bristol, all of whom do excellent book coaching. And I would thoroughly recommend doing that. Yeah, because I think um, if you if it's not your bag and you want to get your book out, then it can take a lot of your time. And again, writing the book or coming up with a book, is, it's not, um, you know, as you've already said, it's not really a profitable exercise when you're doing it, given the time to it. And also, if you're not making money at the end, you know, you need to just use it as a platform. You so really have to work out where it fits in your business model. Um, don't yeah. do a book for some sort of vanity exercise. Please don't. Um, it, you know, it's um, it's expensive. It's time consuming. You have to market it all the time. Um, so please, you know, don't think that a book is a silver bullet. It really isn't. Um, it, a, it has to be bloody good um, to stand out because there are millions of books published every day more by the moment considering people can do it you know from their, yeah. from their laptop and put it onto Amazon um, mm. and think really clearly about how it's going to um, build into your business model because um, it's not you know I, I spent a lot of money on the illustrations um, I, I spent extra money on um, on proper indexing and um, so you know there are lots of costs as well that perhaps people wouldn't have thought of um, and I'm a bit of a perfectionist so uh, <laughs> but what you did do was you created an amazing book and in my opinion the best marketing book in the market so what I'd love to do is I'd love as many people to download the book for free you get the workbooks as well share this with your friends guys we will have it all over the clan we'll put it all over social media this is something not to be missed and I think you know what I'm sure some of you that are watching have, have been on the get rich quick and you know upsell 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 there's no upsell here Brian he really just wants to take the information from here and put it in your business so take it it's free um, yes. I've been the entrepreneur's godmother it's been an absolute pleasure to interview Brian e. Thomas speaker author of Watertight Marketing and you know hopefully a friend forever so thank you so much for your time Brian e. And thank you to the clan for watching. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye.